Hi! Shein, the Chinese fashion detailer, is quickly becoming one of the most favorite fashion brands among millennials. Last year, it beat Amazon on iOS App Store and becoming the leading shopping app in over 50 countries. She is emerging as a fast fashion juggernaut, can't solely be attributed to its fashion design or its low price. So, what makes Shein so unique? I looked through materials in both Chinese and English and found the answer made seem simple towards supply chain. So today in this video, we won't talk about its fashion design or its poor quality. Let's just look at it as a business story. Who built the empire of Shein and how the supply chain supported Shein's success? Shein's founder is Grace Xu. Grace was born in a small city in China and after graduating from university in 2007, Chris joined a startup that provided integrated marketing service for Chinese seller. His position is SEO specialist. That means Chris used technology method to help Chinese sellers' marketing campaign more visible on internet. That is exactly what Shein is good at today, right? One year later, Chris started his own e-commerce business, which will later grow into the Shein we know today. Chris began by selling women wedding dress. Wedding dress has a huge price difference between China and the US. Sometimes you just need to change the RMB to US dollar and then put it on website. Chris made his first million by selling wedding dress and then named his website as shezet.com, which we can take it as she 1.0. Then in 2012, Chris expanded product categories to women's fast fashion, which I will take as Shein 2.0. At that time, she wasn't involved in any aspect of garment designing or manufacturing. So, where does the clothes come from? Actually, she operated as a dropshipping business. Chris and his team just went to Guangzhou Wholesale Market and take pictures at the clothes, then put the photo on website. When there was an order, they just come back to the wholesale market and pick the clothes up, then deliver it overseas. This approach is just simple, but really worked. And it was a lighter business model. You should notice that Chris proved his product market fit with zero inventory. During the first two years, this model went well, but problems started to emerge as the others grew. More often than before, products were more likely to sell out in the wholesale market before Shein could pick it up. This problem became the bottleneck of Shein's fast growth. So in 2014, Chris made his key move to build Shein's own supply chain, transforming Shein into an integrated retailer. And we can call it as Shein 3.0. The supply chain is the core capacity that supports Shein's aggressive growth. To understand why it matters, let's have a quick knowledge about supply chain. In manufacturing, the concept of supply chain captures the whole process of how goods are produced and delivered to customers. It generally includes product planning, designing, ordering, production, logistics, and retail. For example, if I, Ishii, want to put a shoe brand as Ishii Shosuk into market, first of all, I should define who are my main customer and what style they would like. Then the designer will design what the shoe will look like exactly. And then maybe I will organize a show and invite dealers to order. According to the order information, I will launch the production in the factories and then deliver my shoes to my dealer and let them to sell in their stores. This is a traditional and simple version of supply chain. This supply chain model has two major risks. Firstly, it is a one-way process. Customers' feedback are not be collected before designing or production. 
So there is always the risk of mismatch between supply and demand. Even if a market survey and analysis can be done before the designing and production, there might be still a large time lag. Like three months before, I set a love list up. But this idea might change hundreds of times in my mind during the whole three months. Now I just like a t-shirt. Besides, factory normally require a minimum order for every single production. A fast fashion retailer like Zara reportedly put orders of 2,000 units per sale. Items that are not selling will stay in inventory, pushing up the overall cost and straining the cash flow. As a result, the method of trial and error is really costly. So, how does Shein resolve this problem? It has two weapons in the supply chain data and manufacturing network. Shein used data to reduce the mismatch. Shein's main target shoppers are the internet native generation, so Shein scrapes the data from shopping website and social media to detect what colors, styles, and patterns are most popular among the young people. If a specific garment goes viral overnight on TikTok, this information will be sent to Shein's supply end. Then Shein will instantaneously order the similar garments. The supply end and the demand end interact in nearly real time. <gasps> so you see, it's not the fashion guys who are designing, it's the engineers. Engineers looking at data. <laughs> to lower the cost and the inventory risk, she just play very small initial order. 100 or even smaller unit per sale. The solution is just so simple, but why Shein can do that? Other retailers like Zara, HM cannot. That's because Shein fully used the network of Chinese small manufacturing workshops to its advantages. In recent years, China has emerged as an international manufacturing hub. There are numerous skilled and inexpensive workers in large, medium, and small size factories. Large factories may have strict minimum ordering requirement and strict working schedule. But those small factories or workshops, in order to survive in the highly competing market, are willing to pick up orders daily and accept small orders and working over time. She is spent years cultivating the relationship with those small factories. They are reportedly 6,000 small factories in Shein's manufacturing ecosystem. So, Shein can function in a small order, quick reaction model. Managing such a quantity of supplier is not easy. So, how does Shein handle it? Shein unites them with internal communication software. You can imagine it as a Uber system. The software publish others then the suppliers just pick up the orders. It is said all suppliers are required to fully upload the garment design specification, fabric, colors, part making details, and so on. So if one specific garment goes popular on website, Shein can publish the reproduction orders, then other suppliers can quickly react. That considerately reduces the time of interpersonal communication and makes suppliers more efficient and, of course, highly replaceable. <laughs> Besides, she uses a rating system to manage its suppliers. This score is according to the production quality, order responding time, and uh, other many standards. Once you are out of the supplier pool, it is rarely possible to get back in. Shein also made a very basic requirement, paying on time. Receiving timely payment is a common difficulty for factories in China. By paying on time, Shein built lots of loyalty from their suppliers, so the suppliers can put more urgency on Shein's order. 
To conclude, Chris Xu found Xi Yin based on his former experience in international e-commerce. He tested the product market fit with a zero inventory method and then built his own supply chain. Xi Yin's supply chain took advantage of real-time data analysis and network of Chinese small factories. Using the mismatch between supply and demand and let Xi Yin function in a small order quick reaction model. So that's what I want to share with you about Xi Yin. Xi Yin's cooperation with small factories make me think about the first industrial revolution during 1840s. Big modern factories were set up and squeezed out the family workshops that exist for hundreds of years. But that was an era of short supply. Nowadays, we are in an era of oversupply. Customers need to diversify and change rapidly. That seems to give the small workshops to survive from the competition on scale. Nice. Its large modern factory will continue dominating in manufacturing industry. What should a better manufacturing ecosystem look like? Welcome to drop your like and leave your comment below and welcome to follow my channel for more interesting content. I'm Ichi, see you next time.